Welcome back, writers. It's uh, great to come together with you again to conclude our lesson um, on using commas in lists that we have learned from Eileen Spinelli. And so to conclude, we're going to review what we've learned and then take a look at what happens when we make changes and the effect it has on the reader. So in our sentence from Sophie's masterpiece, she saw dull green walls, faded rugs, and old window shades. What did we learn from Eileen Spinelli with this sentence? Yeah, we learned that we started with the capital letter and with the period, we don't have any other capital letters in there. And we learned that we can um, combine repetitive sentences like she saw dull green walls, she saw faded rugs, she saw old window shades. We could combine all of those to create a list with commas, right? She saw dull green walls, comma, faded rugs, comma, and old window shades. So that is something that we have learned. Um, now we're going to change that up uh, and talk about the effect it has on the reader. So let's take a look at this first one. What changed here? You're right, the commas are all gone, right? So now if we read it, we don't have those commas to let us know that things are being separated. So now it reads, she saw dull green walls, faded rugs, and old window shades. There's no breath. There's no separation. It kind of all runs together. Um, as a reader, I'm kind of confused as to what goes where. And so as a writer, we want to use those commas to help our reader separate what we're talking about. What about in this one? Well, this one's interesting, isn't it? The change is that that first comma got changed to a period. So now it says she saw dull green walls. Okay, that's fine. That's a sentence. That's a sentence. Now let's look at the next part. Faded rugs and old window shades. Hmm. It's not really a sentence, is it? We don't have a subject. We don't have a verb. We just have stuff. So we want to make sure that when we use periods, we put them in places that really complete our thought and help our reader to fully understand the subject and the verb that creates meaning. Let's take a look at this last one. What changed? Mm, you're right. Instead of using the commas, we use the word and. She saw dull green walls and faded rugs and old window shades. We can do that. We can use and in place of commas. But that gets to be pretty repetitive for the reader, doesn't it? That's the effect it has on the reader. It becomes repetitive and we feel like as a reader, we're going and, 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 and we tend to lose interest that way. So whenever you think about using an and, think in your head, do I want to use and, or can somehow I use a comma here to replace it, especially if you're listing things. Thank you for joining me in this lesson um, using Sophie's Masterpiece and really looking at those commas. When you are out reading, um, books, pay attention to the commas, be thinking about why authors are using those commas and how they're using them, and then maybe how you could use them in your own writing. Uh, enjoy the writing that you're doing, enjoy the reading that you're doing, enjoy your family, enjoy your time, and uh, we'll see you next time.